I was sleeping in my best friend's house when I got a call from my mom. Something wasn't right. We heard more explosions overhead and we had the red alert as well. They took my wife. I couldn't stop them. At least the kids were up with us. My unit was the first one to be recruited. I left my wife and four kids at home. I couldn't sleep or eat. My son was out there fighting. He's 19, just a child. We hid in the safe room for 36 hours. I was so scared. They burned our house. It's worse than any nightmare. We thought we were prepared, but the horrors that we saw in the kibbutz were too much. After five days, he texted me. Mom, I love you. I'm so sorry. And then silence. Do you get what I'm saying? I have no home, no school, and my best friend is dead. Babies, their heads cut off. Families completely gunned down in their beds. For hours, I tried to understand what was happening. There was no answer. And then I was back home after 100 days of fighting. Now I need to start over and save my dying business. So you get it? I didn't sleep for 120 days. My heart and my mind are still there. How do you go? I don't. It's a struggle. I'm taking sleeping pills every night. Finally, he called me, thank God. Is he okay? He's okay. He's in the hospital with painkillers. It's okay, no? I need to sleep. immediately realized that this is a catastrophic event and the scope of the trauma is massive. The circles of impact are so wide that their influence on the resilience of Israeli society will accompany us for many years to come. This is an unprecedented event. It challenges all of Israel's mental health systems. ICA had to act as quickly as possible. Since then, we are walking around the clock. ICA has fully committed itself to the pressing needs of Israeli society providing emergency training to thousands of mental health professionals, doctors, and educators. Our clinical team has been deployed to aid families evacuated from the Gaza border and the survivors of the Nova Festival, leading emergency interventions to alleviate suffering and begin the trauma processing. The painful reality is that one out of every four Israelis reported an increase in the use of addictive substances since the atrocities of the 7th of October. Many are experiencing emotional distress, high levels of anxiety, turning to substances for some kind of relief and comfort. The last study we conducted in December 2023 showed that the stats are against us. We're on the verge of a national pandemic. ICA has additionally developed and implemented resilience programs in 60 schools in southern Israel, benefiting over 40,000 adolescents. We have also launched a comprehensive awareness campaign warning against the dangers of substance abuse, reaching over 2 million views. When we decided on building the new multidisciplinary center on addiction and mental health in Jerusalem, little did we know how these events will unfold. The new National Addiction and Mental Health Center will serve as a beacon of innovation in research, training, and treatment, additionally developing prevention programs and technological innovations to expand the outreach and possibilities of detection and treatment in mental distress and addictions. At this critical juncture, the ICA must allocate all its resources to establish a secure foundation for all those who are suffering. Your partnership and your support can empower us to broaden our outreach, to enhance our programs. Together, we can make a substantial impact on both the social and economic fabric of Israeli society, particularly during its most critical times. We have many challenges ahead of us, but it's our duty to help our country. Together, we heal. Together, we heal. Together, we, we heal. heal.